You can't just go around telling other people what to say. Although I guess I'm being pretentious by telling you not to tell me what to say. So, yeah, I guess you can tell everyone what to say, but they don't have to listen. The technical definition of an objective opinion is not influenced by personal feelings, interpretations, or prejudice. It is based on facts and is unbiased. That's why it doesn't exist. It can't exist. Because it is in itself a contradiction. You can't just infiltrate an objective statement with your opinion and it be objective. It becomes subjective as soon as your opinion touches it. So you can't really say articles, which are essentially opinions and critiques in the first place. They, they can't be objective in the literal sense. They can't be unbiased in the literal sense. But they can be fair and uninfluenced by some sort of monetary gain. You can't change people or really influence their systems of belief it's in, you know, maybe in small ways. People have to be willing to change in order for that to happen. But you can influence the rules and regulations about conduct and practices and just ethics in general. That's why you have to target the system and not the people within it. I mean, it really shouldn't be right that opinion columns about video games, which should be critiques and reviews specifically, end up being glorified advertisements. I mean, what if a critic of some integrity and renown like the late, great Roger Ebert had taken what is essentially bribes to write a favorable review on a movie just to drum up extra sales? People shouldn't be allowed to accept bribes and then influence game sales any more than they should be allowed to do it in politics or other businesses. Yes, expose the people who are corrupt is examples of what we are fighting against, but be careful not to single them out. That's why we've hit so many media walls with the whole gamers attack women and it gives them red herrings to cover up the debate that they know they can't win. When, the, when everything detracts from the point and goes off on a tangent that can be considered a straw man fallacy, it's just further evidence that they don't have a defense against what you're accusing them of in the first place and they know they're in trouble so they have to get the attention off of the subject at hand. What bothers me most about this entire Utah school threat fiasco it, what actually happened how it went down that's that's a whole other thing entirely I, I don't really I can understand why the the person in question who I'm not going to even mention in this video threatened why she would maybe want to do it and all that kind of stuff if it was indeed what she she thought it was at the time what bothers me the most about this entire scenario is how the media reacted to it. And by the media, I don't just mean like the big media, which they did too, but I'm talking about everywhere on the internet blew up with 27 identical articles almost eerily quickly after the story broke about how all Gamergate people were misogynistic, death threat wielding man children who hated all women and it was like are you serious like how can you put how can there be this many articles at the same time that say almost the exact same thing with no information you don't know where the threat came from it was completely anonymous it had no evidence that it was connected to anything other than a person that had guns and hated feminists and what's I mean, how many people does that describe good lord but at the same time, it, you were just you were attaching a label to a, an anonymous threat and accusing an entire group of people, by the way, stepping on the toes of hundreds to possibly thousands of minorities and women and transgenders and all that. I mean, that's just a whole nother level to it right there. But just accusing them of being these evil things without... A shred of evidence. This is the news. Your job is to spread information so that people know what's going on. That was straight up tabloid journalism. To just take a... Uh, it's so annoying. Like that, that, that got me really mad. I hate to be the conspiracy theorist kind of guy. But by golly. There sure was an awful lot of coincidence behind all of a sudden there's all these articles and I mean within seconds of the story breaking and now as soon as the Utah police debunk it by saying that it was not even really a threat 
and uh, this person goes on official record saying that it was because of the open carry laws that she felt unsafe. This is the reason she canceled her thing. The articles changed stances completely and completely shut out any mention for, well, most of them did, cut out any mention of uh, hashtag Gamergate and switched to a discussion about how gun laws are what's making women feel unsafe. <laughs> and I don't know if that was a knock at guns, really, or was it just covering themselves so that people would forget that they were talking about Gamergate before? I don't, I don't know. That whole thing right there was ridiculous. That is completely unethical, childish, reactive journalism bias. I can't think of a word that describes it that I can say in a G-rated presence. <laughs> Not only that. But did anyone apologize? Nope. Not a single one of the news outlets that accused all the gamer gators of being responsible for this apologized to them. Why is that? I mean, seriously, it really reminded me of a lynch mob. And I don't say things like that lightly because I don't like associating all these people that compare friggin' Gamergate to ISIS. Say that out loud and then tell me it doesn't make you sound like you're the one that's insane. Gamergate is like ISIS? Are you insane? The only people like ISIS are ISIS! Last time I checked, Twitter debates weren't even remotely similar to a person getting his head sawn off on video. I understand that people like to run off at the mouth sometimes because they get passionate about a particular subject, but some people really need to watch what they say on Twitter, Facebook, any of the social media before they say it. A anyway, I... All these people that say this kind of stuff, and it just, it's just like another argument on the internet where people will say somebody's like Hitler. No, Hitler was like Hitler. Stop calling somebody that doesn't agree with you Hitler. It's like unspoken internet rule number one. Be counterproductive by being irrational. I mean, I swear, it's written on the top of the internet constitution in gold ink or something. It's just a little bit above rule 34 and 35, which are written in Comic Sans in rainbow ink. I think the real problem, well, I say real problem a lot, but a major problem is the fact that when you create a hashtag and it becomes popular, literally anybody can use that hashtag. There is no limitation. It is not copyrighted. So, I mean, this is proven by the fact that the opposition commonly uses the hashtag Gamergate in order to create arguments with Gamergators. They use it to... Uh, I mean, th that's what the hashtag is for, so that you can find a particular topic about, you know, a particular post about a particular topic. So, uh, you know, equating people that are, oh, Gamergate is bad, with anybody that posts under the hashtag Gamergate is completely ludicrous. There was a guy the other day, there's actually several, he had several alt accounts, where he was doxing literally everyone he could possibly friggin Adam Baldwin and pa Patton Oswalt got doxxed by this guy and he was using the hashtag Gamergate uh, the hashtag I, I got doxxed I got doxxed like three times but I don't give a crap my information is just kind of out there anyway but it, it's, it just goes to show that the hashtag alone is not the point it's the people it's the core group of people that matter in this and the core group of people are extremely friendly and extremely nice people that care about a particular topic to the point that they are willing to suffer just appalling verbal abuse from people that should be their peers or adults I mean this is you're essentially I am I am completely flabbergasted that these people that are game journalists and game devs and the like are essentially verbally abusing children and I, I don't use children in like a derogatory way I use it in a a motherly uh, caregiver kind of way like you know these these young adults and some of you are probably teenagers gamer gators they are getting t just bullied bull uh, cyber bullied by people who are supposedly adults. You're suppo it's gross misconduct. It's completely uh, unprofessional. 
This is a group of people that just simply believe in something so much that they thought that they'd make a, a not even an official movement yet. It's like a it's like a quasi movement. It's a pseudo movement. It's almost there. But they believed in it so hard and so much that they are willing to devote time and energy into fixing a problem that they think is there, or they see is there, that actually probably is there based on the evidence that's been presented over the last couple of weeks especially. Uh, and are met with nothing but just rage and hate and unabashed bullying to the point where it's absolutely disgusting. So my position in Hashtag Gamergate, what I like to do is provide emotional and verbal support and just, I just kind of sit back and say, hey, you know, this is wrong what you're saying to this poor person that is just doing something that she believes in. Why are you talking such... Why, why is why is the internet all about talking smack to each other just because you can hide behind a screen and verbally abuse someone that essentially to you doesn't exist because they're just a digital signal but they're actual people actual human beings that you're telling to go die and telling personal information about and uh, accusing of being something they're not and just it's, it's just, like I said, it's cyberbullying. It's just wrong. The Gamergate people aren't there to abuse or harass anyone. They're just standing up for what they believe in. I kind of equate them to vegans and Ron Paul supporters. They're probably right, but people can't stand to consider that, so they just dismiss them immediately without even considering their possibility that they might have a good point. Until the game devs and media personnel stop posting hate speech on social media, nothing good is going to be accomplished. And I'm not saying that everyone of any group is. I'm talking about specific people that know who they are and that Gamergate knows who they are because they've got screen caps of them being abused by these people consistently. So, I mean, it's not like I'm just making this up. And then to go back around and say that you're only saying that sort of thing because they were being verbally abusive to you is just the height of hypocrisy. Gamergate is not about misogyny or targeting women in the gaming industry or in video games in general. What Gamergate is about is about the most patient group of people I've ever seen because I wouldn't put up with that kind of stuff if it was person. Well, I suppose I would because I'm I'm more I I've said a lot of things I regret on the internet. I can go ahead and screenshot some of that stuff. I don't care. But at some point you've got to grow up and show a little integrity and maturity. I really kind of wonder about it, whether or not some of the things that have been said are illegal. Because cyberbullying is actually a crime now, so maybe someone should get on that. See, the thing is, they don't have a bunch of biased media friends backing them up. Whereas the opposition has just, apparently, the entire world on their shoulders because they can throw out red herrings and use meat shields to protect themselves from any kind of retaliation. I don't know, I need to stop talking about this because it's got me... I don't... I don't normally care about something, but bullying is not okay. I just want to get that across. Peace out, guys. This has been Mr. Wolfie. Love you guys.